Okay, so you know how to use the basic tools. Now let's start making the actual treasure chest. And we're gonna just make a very simple shape. We're not gonna try to get crazy with it. In the next weeks, uh, next tomorrow's videos, I'll show you how to dive deeper into making it more stylish, at least like stylish and interesting. But right now, this should be just fine. I wanna start by getting the chest shape, which should be like a little bit wider than it is tall uh, and deep. So I'm gonna hit S of X and just drag out to a shape you want. If you wanna follow along with me exactly and look at the exact scales you put in, that's fine. It's not gonna make a huge difference. Just try to follow some of my shapes as best you can. So I'm gonna hit SY, drag it out a little bit. And if you wanna make your, when you're doing these draggings and you wanna make it a little bit more precise, if you hold shift, you'll go slower. If you hold control, you'll go in larger numbers and quicker. So it's just a, a nice way of controlling how much you change about it. So this looks pretty decent as far as a size goes, but I actually, Gonna go into this mode, hit three. So that I tab to go into edit mode, hit three. I'm gonna hit G and middle mouse click to drag it up and down. Cause I wanna make the base of my treasure chest and then I'm gonna hit E to extrude up what I think should the top be. Maybe about here. And I'm gonna hit S of Y because I'm trying to get that domed top. Now, of course this isn't nearly enough sides and that's where that bevel tool comes in if you recall. So I'm gonna select these two edges together, Control B, and I'm gonna drag them out. Let's get it maybe right about here, because I wanna see if I can get them to line up with each other. Now, if they are going like this, I can actually click this guy called Clamp Override, which will keep them from pushing through. So I can hit these sliders, choose my number of segments, but let's keep it relatively low. We don't need that many. Um, yeah, let's go maybe about here. Now this looks good and it's a now like a dome top like we want. One of the problems is this looks like one vert, but if I go to my tweak mode here, it's actually two, but we can fix that. Hit A to select all my verts, hit M, and instead of merging by center cursor, we're gonna do by distance. This just merges anything that's really close to itself. And you can see the little message said remove two vertices. So now it's two vertices by themselves, great. So now the next thing we need with a treasure chest is uh, we know it's gonna be symmetrical left to right. And so why not save ourselves some time and only work on half of it? So I'm gonna hold, uh, hit Control R and I'm gonna drag this in and then just right click to put it in the middle. And I'm also gonna want a, a tool that I didn't show you how to use yet. I'm gonna hit Control R here, do the same thing because I wanna sort of bisect it on both sides. And you notice it did go all the way to the top. That's because the control R tool only works when it goes through something four-sided. When I get into topology, I'll explain a little bit more of why. But what we can do is select these two verts here and hit J. Think about J for join. Again, all of these names have like a logical reason to it, but it's just like get used to it as much as you possibly can. And now we draw a line through the whole thing. Now that I got that, I'm going to delete everything but this front corner of the object. So I'm just holding control and I'm dragging around, because let's see, uh, you know what, we'll do it this way. I'm gonna kind of drag over half of it, so I'm gonna go to my box select tool, and I'm gonna go into x-ray mode. I need to be in x-ray mode, and you can see as soon as I hit this mode, you get these little dots on everything. This means I can drag over them. If this mode's off and I do the same pick box drag, it'll only get the stuff my camera can see. It's a little different than Maya and 3DX Max that way. So I'm gonna drag over these, hit X, and I'm gonna delete faces. Then go from the top, and let's just pop into my orthogonal top, just to be sure. Uh, I know wherever my front is, so let's make this my, my front, so let's delete the back, X, faces. And we can turn this back off. So here, we've only got like a little bit of it, but I wanna show you your first taste of a modifier. So in modifiers, I can add a mirror modifier, and then I'm also gonna mirror it in the Y axis. So we can see X axis and Y axis. And look, my whole treasure chest is back. But if I hit tab, you notice I can only affect part of it. And this is what I wanna do. Because now when I make changes to it, so let's say I wanna make a little inset. So I'm making cuts. You can see to kind of define where the banding and inner part of my treasure chest are gonna like line up. Let's do another one here. And actually, just to make it a little bit better, I'm gonna bring that out holding G and middle mouse drag just to pull that up. So now what I can do is hit these edges here. I'm gonna hit Alt E 
and I'm going to extrude along normal instead of a normal extrude. The reason I'm doing this is extrude along normal sort of hits all in the same direction. And uh, I can also, because if I just do the regular E, you'll see it kind of hits, but it's all like really flat and together. So what I really want is this Alt E extrude along normal because it sort of pushes them out along their normal direction. So let's push that in just a little bit. And then I want it to do the exact same one here. So I'm going to hit Shift R, which is repeat. And you can see it's, it's doing it to every other side. Now there's one problem, of course, we see up here. I did that and uh, it kind of lost one of my edges because it pushed through. We're going to turn on clipping, which means it's not going to be able to cut through left to right. Let's delete this uh, face. And now we have a little gap here, but we can fix that by hitting G and Y, because again, it's the Y direction we're moving across. And with clipping on, it won't actually let us move these in a way that's going to cross over their own symmetry. So now we got this part of the treasure chest. Let's get the sides. I want to do the same thing for the side that I did for here, but you notice, remember, if I cut like this, it's not going to really make that cut all the way around. I'm going to use something different instead. I'm going to use that inset tool. But if I choose this and I hit inset, it's going to give me a, a line here. It's going to give me a line there. I don't want any of that. So I'm going to select all of these running down and I'm going to hit inset. So it's going to create a band that runs all the way over. And I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to turn on or turn off boundary. And it, it's smart. It knows that it's not uh, the mirrors applied later. And so it's going to treat it as if this is an empty object, which is going to give me what I want in terms of a shape. So just try to give it you know, nice and square so it has the same kind of sides. And now I can do this exact same one here. Hit E and just extrude it in. Let's do the same thing maybe for the bottom, just to, in case we see the bottom, make it a little bit more interesting. And, you know, you got yourself a pretty good start to a treasure chest. Let's do a couple more things to this to make it, like I said, a little bit more spiffed up. Our treasure chest probably could use some handles. So let's go ahead and insert some of those. I'm going to go ahead and add a new mesh. And this time, I'm just going to add a torus. Because it's sort of like this ring circular kind of object. But uh, actually, I don't like this torus. Let's... um. Let me show you really quick. Let's focus on just the ring itself. I'm going to go over to cube here and I can either hit this I to hide it or I can hit H to hide it. Uh, Alt H always brings back anything hidden. Uh, so I can hit this. It's still there. It's just hidden and out of the way. So I can hit Shift A. I can go to Taurus and I can choose the number of segments. So if I say six major segments, it's six sides. And right now it's got 12 minor segments, meaning it's a ring of 12. I can set that to six as well to sort of get this nice chunky, kind of like edgy, thick ring to something like that. Now, if I go out into this mode, let's move it off to the side so that I'll be able to bring my treasure chest back. And I, I want it to sort of fit onto the side. So I want it to rotate right now. And I'll show you this with the rotate tool. I want it to line up like that. But I can be precise. If you look in the upper left-hand corner of my screen, you see it's showing a rotate value. I can get it close and then just punch in the number. Uh, I can also, as I'm rotating, uh, so if I pick one of these axes to rotate around, hold control R, or sorry, just control, hold down control and it'll do some snapping. And then I can scale it down to what I want, bring it back here, and I can rotate it. Let's look at the orthographic front, what are the things it's nice for, and just put them together. It's okay if it pokes through a little bit because uh, this is, fake, so it doesn't actually matter. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to add a modifier and I want to mirror it, but it's not mirroring to the other side, like where to go. Well, it's actually mirroring on itself. And so I don't want it to mirror on itself because its origin is here. So it's mirroring across this origin. And this is why if I actually come in here and, and rotate it, you'll see there's two of them in there. What I want to do is I want to mirror it across this chest. So I can actually use this mirror object, grab the eyedropper, select the chest, and now Wherever this is, it's gonna try to mirror it around the chest. And if I move the chest, we can see it also moves that mirror. So it's a nice way of just throwing that in there and making it really quick. Let's do one last thing to this. A good treasure chest needs a lock. Otherwise, it's not really a treasure chest, is it? But before we do that, let's name some stuff because this is called cube, this is called Taurus. Who even knows what that is? I can go into here and double click on any name and call it chest. 
I can also select an object like this here and hit F2 on my keyboard, name it handle. And what's nice about this is say I'm hiding or showing stuff, I can do it from the menu and I can always tell what I'm looking at. So let's hide both of these, same way. And now I'm gonna add a, a lock to this chest. And I'm gonna start with a plane because I wanna show you a different way of modeling that's maybe a little bit faster when you're trying to make a more complicated, complicated shape. So I'm gonna look at it from straight down on top. I'm gonna do the same thing um, I kind of did before, but I'm gonna create two cuts through cross sections here. Another way to do that is if I select this uh, as a full square and I hit Control F, I can do a, let's see. Oh, I guess it's on the right hand model. Sometimes I might be doing this and like some stuff might be in slightly different spots depending on the version. I'm using Blender 2.93, which should be the most recent version is if you're watching this video, but uh, if you're watching it maybe a year or two later, sometimes these change where they're looking. I'll try to add any notes in case that happens. But I can add subdivide. And so, you know, if you subdivide, it will create these multiple subdivisions, but I just need one subdivision, which kind of creates this grid in here. And I want to select this center little object right here. And uh, let's actually make this a circle. So control B is normally bevel, but it won't work here. But if I do control shift B, it'll work on this shape. And I can choose how many sides I want. It's creating this little diamond pattern, which is cool, but ultimately not what I'm gonna want. What I want is to select these four by themselves and hit S to scale them up until it turns into sort of a rounder shape because I'm trying to make a round hole for this. Now I'm going to run through, select these two verts, J, select these two verts, J, and then I'm gonna delete these edges together. So let's kind of clean this up, this edge to this edge, J, this edge to this edge, J, and this edge to this edge, J. This is nice because these are all quads and these are all tries, which is fine, but it's gonna work a little bit better. Now I'm gonna show you one more new tool. It's called the knife tool. The knife tool is multifunctional, so I can either drag it across something to make and hit enter to make some cuts, or with this, I can get it to snap to an edge or to a vert. So if I snap it to this vert here and then I hit C, it's gonna constrain it to a direction and I can either hit it on the line or drag it out and hit enter, because if you do anything else, it'll undo it. And now I have this shape. So what I'm gonna do with this is just like before, I'm gonna add a mirror modifier and I'm going to take all these faces together and I'll show you why, and I'm gonna extrude them up together. And now I'm going to take just, let's, let's make another cut through here, down at the bottom. So maybe from here, and we'll go all the way out. Why not? Uh, C gives me a nice straight line. And that'll run it through. Well, okay, I'm sorry about this. I'm gonna undo a couple times, Control Z. Usually I try to avoid any undos in these videos, but it happens. They all make mistakes. Hit this K which is gonna do the knife tool, C, which is gonna draw the line out. I wanna clean this up just a little bit. It's me being persnickety, but it's a good habit to get into. I'm gonna hit this, shift select this one, and we can see this one is yellow and this one's white. It means the white one is active. So if I hit M, I can say at last, and it will snap it to that. The reason I did this, all of this, is so that I can hit A to select all of them. I can hit E to extrude them. And now I can select just these ones around the outside, E to extrude them. And I have a nice little lock to work with here. So I'm gonna F2, name this lock. Let's bring back the chest, bring back this thing here. G, middle mouse to drag it out. Uh, R, X, 90, rotates it forward. S to scale it down. And I like to look at it from the orthographic front. If you're ever having a hard time seeing stuff like this too, there's a couple options we can use. In this little carrot next to shading, we can turn on what's called cavity, and I like to set it to both, and this just gives us a shadow and an outline, and that makes it look a little nicer, but it also just makes it easier to read for us visually. And so I'm gonna place it up, and then just drag it over on top. And look at that. I mean, of course, yours might be a little different, but we have a treasure chest. And because this is still mirrored, it's pretty easy to be able to select 
say, some of these faces. If I want to make the center a little narrower, just GX, which drags it into this axis. I want to change some of the shapes up. But for the most part, it's uh, pretty descriptive of the thing I want. I realize the top here, too, is kind of missing this little shape. Like, I should have this all extruded over here. Maybe I want to, like, this little area is too fine down. I can hit G to sort of drag it up. Or if I hit G twice, GG, it'll actually sort of slide it along the edges. I, I do think I'm looking at this now, and I want this line to wrap all the way around because I would want this dividing line to be the edges between them. But I've also got a tool for that. If I hit this and I come over, this is my extrude um, by default. It's an extrude region, which is the same one that we normally do. But uh, if I want to like get this to pull itself out, I'll show you how I would do that. So I'm gonna hit X to delete this face. I'm gonna hit X to delete this face and I'm gonna select just this edge by itself. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say E to extrude it and I'm gonna right click immediately and then hit G and Y. Because clipping is turned on, it's gonna go all the way across. The one problem though is I still have a face inside here so with it still selected, uh, I hit um, this little x-ray mode to see that. With this face still selected, I'm going to hit X, go to faces to delete it. And I also have, if you can see through, this little edge now on the inside, which I don't really want. So if I look inside the model, we can see this face here has like an inside to it, which I don't really want because it's not punched in, like these other ones are punched in, this one shouldn't have a backside to it, and it shouldn't have an underside to it. So I'm gonna select both of those and delete those. And uh, I can select these two verts together, M, and let's merge those at center, just so that we have a nice little bit. And then we need to fill this hole here. So if I hit two, and I select all these other edges, I can hit F, and it fills it back in for me just to fix that little thing. It's not something you have to do and maybe you did it a little differently than me. I want to show you how I solve those kinds of problems. It's something you're gonna get used to more as you watch some of my videos. So that's it, you made your first model, uh, maybe. First treasure chest, it's a simple asset, but in the next video, a series of videos on this, I'm gonna dive deeper into how to stylize this and make it more visually interesting to work with. Cool, see you in the next one.